emotional intelligence so emotional intelligence the concept uh, the term means that uh, we are managing our emotions to get the things done and also uh, we are sensing the emotions of others so this ability is what you call it as emotional intelligence so if you have a high emotional intelligence you are very good with managing your own emotions to get things done in your life for example to to become more productive and also you have high empathy that means you can sense others emotions and that will significantly improve the way you communicate with others right so this concept is kind of new originated in 1980s and uh, popularized by daniel goldman the science popularizer you know and of course there is another term called emotional quotient there is a, a numerical value to measure the emotional intelligence you know eq just like the iq iq measures your intelligence right that the logical intelligence the real intelligence while eq measures you know how emotionally talented you are that is your emotional intelligence so of course it is highly overrated term nowadays the consensus is that eq uh, doesn't account much of our lives so early on people thought that eq is like you know much of our success and motivation and productivity is controlled by eq while iq doesn't play much role but nowadays it's clear that more than twice of our success is attributable to the iq not the eq you know so uh, beware that the, the term eq is highly abused and highly uh, it's hyper rated you know or uh, you know or overrated term so it is not like that and, but most importantly eq is situational it is contextual so some jobs need high eq one example would be as a counselor so if you ha have to work as a counselor you need to have a better eq you know so it all depends on which profession you are in and another uh, important hallmark is that iq uh, you know intelligence is mostly controlled by the genes you know the nature and nurture argument remember so in that case nurture doesn't play much of the role but nature that is coded in your genome that you you don't have much control over it the, the intelligence you know at the same time eq is partly controlled by the genes and partly controlled by the way we were brought up and the way we interact with others our social circumstances you know so that is uh, you know that is something interesting about the eq right so uh, of course it, it still remains ambiguous concept the eq uh, because there is no way to objectively test one's eq well iq of course there are standardized tests like mensa test you know at the same time eq is highly subjective and uh, yeah it is quite ambiguous too right well irrespective uh, of the power of this eq shaping our life improving your emotional intelligence will definitely pay you in long run because that will improve your charisma it will improve your leadership quality uh, big be all because it improves the empathy you know uh, it it improves how the others feel about you right so that's why it's very very important to improve your eq as well as your emotional intelligence right so eq uh, increases as we get older you know that is because we learn from experiences right and uh, our empathy also gets increased when we become older and there are some interesting study that uh, last year it has published uh, uh, Schmalor and Hein in 2021 paper. It says that the, the uh, higher your socioeconomic status, lower your EQ is. So that means if you are a rich person, affluent person, then chances are high that your emotional intelligence is pretty low. So you need to work harder to make up, you know, very interesting, isn't it? So some additional tips on how to improve your emotional intelligence include, of course, the, the number one tip is to improve your empathy. So to improve the empathy, you need to listen others, right? So most of the time we don't listen when others are speaking. We are just waiting for us to speak. We are just thinking what, how to reply and how to how to speak what to speak next we are not even listening properly you know so active listening is the number one tip to improve the empathy and also that that also helps you to improve your emotional intelligence you know 
So you also should learn how to recognize the facial expressions of others. So there are so many interesting uh, online resources and quiz, you know, uh, like person of various races. Of course, it, it all depends on the race, right? Uh, uh, and of course, even in India, right? South Indians and North Indians have different facial expressions when they become anger, when they become sad, you know, uh, or passive aggression. All these different and subtle facial expressions, if you can recognize, then chances are high that your emotional intelligence is also high. So take up this quiz and uh, your answers. You have to carefully uh, look at it and you need to learn which facial expressions you are poor at recognizing. So that will help you to improve your empathy as well as the, you know, this uh, emotional intelligence. And you can also improve your social skills. So, of course, there are so, so, several social skills, including teamwork and networking and uh, negotiation with others, right? Mentoring, and even winning friends and charisma. All these are part of the social skills, uh, which I've comprehensively covered in my book on life skills. Please check it out. And some of this we are covering it as part of this uh, course as well, okay? And uh, improving the motivation is also extremely important. So we will cover uh, some tips on improving your motivation. So this will also have uh, ramifications on your emotional intelligence. So if you have high motivation, then you are much, much emotionally well off, you know. And also you, can, you have to improve your self-awareness and self-management. Aware of your own feelings, you know, emotional granularity, right? And also... Uh, aware of the emotions and thoughts, you know, and also the consequences of our action, the so-called second order and third order thinking, not just immediate actions, consequence, but it's the second order means the consequence of the consequences. So that way you can just think few steps ahead as in a game of chess. That will also improve substantially your uh, motivation as well as your emotional intelligence, you know. And uh, you need to identify your strength and weakness by, you can ask for feedback, for example, a trusted confidante, you know, your friend, you can ask them for uh, the feedback. But also journaling, studies have shown that journaling means like every day you're just writing something onto the paper, right? Especially the gratitude journal, whom you are feeling thankful for. These journaling definitely work to improve our emotional intelligence, right? And also you have to practice something called self-reflection. So reflection means that uh, the, the consequences of our actions. It's like feedback about our actions, ourselves. So self-critic, right? So before sleep, you can think of it, how the day went. And did you have some, uh, you know, negative incidences with some people? And what made it that way? If it's your fault, where did you go wrong? So that's self reflection is an extremely important way for us to improve our life you know so of course a reflection and uh, acting upon the reflection is part of scientific methodology remember so the science progresses by criticisms rather than appreciations and praise right so if you criticize somebody the scientist then chances are high that the scientist will correct it and the science improves right just like that Democracy also the same way, right? If you criticize the government, government is aware that they are making the wrong steps so they can correct it. So democracy and science is perfectly correlated. It's quite similar, starkingly similar. Carl Sagan have uh, said that few, uh, you know, uh, a, a few decades ago, right? So self-reflection is extremely important, I told you. And... Uh, Self-management, the term refers managing our own emotions, like the anger, thoughts, actions, all those things. And stoicism, again, the stoic, stoic ideas can help it. Like, for example, memento mori. Uh, memento mori means thought of death. So, you know, frequent ruminations about our own death can bring meaning to our life because that makes us to be aware of our limited time on the planet earth and that make us to prioritize what to do in our life rather than simply wasting our time as if death will never come no death is certain 
the only certain things right and yeah so if you think about death you feel much more happy with your life you know so that memento mori is also a very good skill to improve your emotional intelligence so another tip from the uh, the stoic philosophy is something called amor fati which i already introduced in the last class so amor fati means to love the fate whatever be it you know and prepare for the worst premeditatio malorum right think of ruminate on negative things that can happen to you so that you are immunizing yourself against emotional roller coasters right so that's all i hope you will have a great time on managing your emotions and uh, improving your emotional intelligence